E C spot E R E bracket L E delivery logistics execution E C C sir. Second point. We need to define ERP document type for differentiation attributes. Define ERP document type because through document type, item type, both layer, layers will communicate with each other. Define ERP document type for differentiate. attributes attributes means properties how system will differentiate this is the return or this is this is the like customer this is the written delivery this is not written uh, not normal delivery not normal inbound delivery this is written delivery how system will uh, segregate that through the document type of the document type these are the header document Then we need to do mapping. Mapping ERP document type with EWM document type. Simple. Mapping communication linkage. Simple. If you have header document type, we have the must we must have the item. Like for an example, if you have the material master Mara, then you have the item MAR table similar. Fourth steps, mapping, ERP, item tab, to EWM, item type. These are the ECC side, ERP side communication, like the configuration we need to perform. Fifth is the map date types from EWM plus ERP both the side we need to configure the date types on which date we received okay now okay then after I will I'm going to do the configuration for the EWM side Now EWM layer in the EWM side we need activate the activate first point BC sets which is the power slash supply chain warehouse management power slash delivery warehouse underscore sorry inbound underscore returns. In the transaction code SCPR20. See carefully. I will explain it. Few points. As you can see here, activate BC sets supply chain management inbound return inbound return. Here we have the inbound return. Tico. BC sets are nothing but collection of classes, collection of methods, collection of programs, collection of enhancements, collection of baddies, collection of some kind of special function modules. Whenever we activate the business configuration sets, what happens? For an example, I have some special kind of process in the warehouse. For an example, we have the uh, deconsolidation process. Okay. To activate that process, we need to activate the BC sets. Okay, then that process will implement it, will would be triggered inside the SAP system, SAP EWM system. So if I'm talking about here this BC set, whenever we activate this BC set, always we should not activate this BC set. If you will do this implementation directly in the company, or suppose for an example already all the configurations are there all the configuration would be overridden so directly we can't do this okay 
the first time when we are going to implement from the scratch okay from the fresh warehouse that's why I'm, I mentioned here this point okay and the next here we can see the inbound return why I put the inbound why we have the inbound return because we are returned customer when return the goods to us then it will come to our warehouse through the inbound process that's why we say this is an inbound return process okay inbound return second point so after activating this business configuration set what we are going to do second we need to define document type for inbound delivery or inbound delivery procedure inbound see inbound inbound because whenever customer returns us the good it comes through the inbound process right same if you have the header document then define this is the third point item type for same inbound delivery process okay have we put here for for inbound delivery process this is the ewl set configuration fourth point So here we need to determine determine document types for so define means something to define determine means implemented okay whenever you define something that's not just define implementation or determination means you are going to implement that fifth point define allowed item types in inbound delivery process see again inbound came into the picture inbound inbound customer return inbound through inbound in our warehouse then Define item type determination or deter determination of the item type. Both are same. For inbound delivery process. So these are the EWM. So what we have learned today: ECC side and EWM side, both the configuration. Now, for an example, after do this configuration, after doing this configuration. Our products is reached to the GR zone, and this is our warehouse. Now, customer return it returned to us. Now our products are located in GR zone. Next, what we will do? In the next step, so for example. Customer return us the goods, and suppose this is our warehouse. This is warehouse. This is the scrapping area. Scrap store style. Okay. In my uh, channel, you can see some of the configuration, like uh, some idea about the scrapping. Okay. But I have the deep implementation in my own books. But this is as per uh, how we do. So customer returns us. This is the GR zone. Okay, now our products are here. 
a tube. This is our customer. I want to put the product here in this area. This is scrap area. Now products are located here. See carefully. So customer send us, we have the GR zone, which is the temporary storage type. So then after what we will do? We have the work center. We can bring that tube here, we can open that tube, we can we will see. Its customer uh, return us the product, it's true. Customer said all 3000 bearings are rust. Is this true or no? So at the work center I will open the tube and I will do the quality inspection. If my product is filled to the quality inspection, we send back here. Or suppose we have the good business uh, bonding with the customer. Okay, we believe we have the trust, very old customer. So what we do? Directly we need to put here the goods to this location from GR. This is temporary area to here. SCRP storage type. How? It happens how this product will travel from here to here. Yes, obviously the warehouse workers they will do. They will pick from here, then they will perform the scan, then they will perform the put away. If your HU fell down, broke all the material, okay, this is they will implement the exception codes, or if they don't want the, the different, different scenarios are there. But in my simple process, simple, simple, this process happened through the the type of the process the, in the warehouse, the warehouse workers they are going to perform. We call this is warehouse process type. Through warehouse process type, this movement happens. Through movement types, through warehouse process type. I will explain you. Now, now we need to follow put away strategy. To put the product here from here to here, put away strategy. Okay, before the next okay. So the products has been the products have been reached to the GR zone. Okay, then after what we need to do, we need to perform the put away strategy. In the put away strategy, we pick the products, our warehouse worker, they pick the products from the G good receive zone, they perform, they send back, not send back, send the products to the scrapping area. Okay, scrapping zone. How will do? So we need to perform some configurations. Put away strategy. Strategy with warehouse process types. So number first, we need to define warehouse process type first we need to define second we need to determine in bracket I will put implement the warehouse process type number three define put away control indicator pack we call put away Control indicator. What is a put away control indicator? Okay. At runtime, how system will come to know this rejected material which we receive from the customer? We need to put only specific that storage bins, that is storage type, that is scrap area. How system will come to know? Automatically nothing happens in the warehouse or in the any process. We must say everything, each and every small small points to the system. So it happens through the PACI. We call the put away control indicator. It controls the strategy to enhance the flow, enhance the business processes, enhance the moment of the product. It controls, we call PACI, put away control indicator. So through the put away control indicator, our products will go to the, directly to the scrap area not other storage type or storage bins okay system won't be confused so we need to tell to the system we need to put this product exactly here so that i'm going to show you here that's why we need to define the path
And then fourth one, assign storage type to storage type search sequence. Why? Why we need to assign the storage type to storage type search sequence this configuration. Okay, system we will we need to tell to system our storage type where we are going to put away because this is a rejected material by customer. So we need to perform the put away uh, sorry storage type. We need to assign link the storage type to storage type search sequence. Storage type search sequence is nothing but a concept. Storage types are nothing but a physical location. So we need to linkage both means why we link this whenever our uh, products is going to be flow to the uh, final destination like scrap bin this is storage type search sequence held to the system to search the exactly storage type okay so the product will not go to another different storage types by mistakenly okay so suppose you want to send this product to the uh, scrap zone or by mistake your product will reach to the for an example, high like storage type, and by mistake your warehouse worker, they again they will pick because they will they will pick the mistakenly and they will send again to the customer. So these things should not be happen these mistakes. So for that we have the put away control indicator for storage type storage type search sequence. So system will search the oh, okay which storage type I need to find to put this material. The system will search okay this is the scrap scrapping storage type inside this storage section inside this bin we need to place this rejected by customer material or customer which uh, sorry the products which have been rejected by the customers so it enhances the our business flows it, it it's a very like uh, i can say like an optimization technique so we use packy e, put away control indicator storage type search sequence okay strategies like bin sorting, when we create the storage bin, we do the sorting process. So that is a benefit feature for the at runtime. So we assign the storage type. In our case, in our business case, our storage type is scrap. Storage type search system will search everything smoothly. So you, this rejected product will not go to another storage type. Okay. Then implement or specify storage type search sequence then fifth then sixth generate activity area activity areas activity area here uh, when they pick from the GR zone this is an activity area when they put into the scrap bin there is an activity area because without okay, I will explain you why we need an activity area in the warehouse? What are the activity areas? The first one is uh, my videos are not perfect because I am not a perfect like a camera shooter. Okay, these are the normal first video. If you will, if you will like, then I will put more informative video for you. Okay, I will. So, why we need activity area? Activity area means, for example, if you if 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 the if you go inside the, for an example, supermarket, what will be the activities? People pick, people see the products, people, they select, they put into the bag. They, these are nothing but an actions. Actions are nothing but an activities. So, we need to tell to system, okay, products are located in the GR zone, activities, picking, and put away to the scrapping zone. So, we need to tell to these things to the system these are the activities okay so you need to put this product to the scrap bin not in the high rack not in the bulk not in the pallet not in the open or not in the different kind like like we have a different m1 like different kind of d1 c1 depends upon the business so activities will let the system knows okay we you need to pick you need to put so that's why we need to assign here activity areas generate activity areas for for which process put away to scrap storage type to the scrapping bin to the scrapping storage section okay 